Hello, Mia. Nice to see you. Cheryl, Jerry. I hope everybody's well tonight. Hello, Cheryl. Sad I don't get to see you this weekend. I'm sorry. This, uh, Next month down in New Orleans. Funny how they knew that it would be virtual this year before it was virtual this year. Funny how things work out sometimes. You're awesome too. So it's going to be a little Good Friday moment here. Fun. Playing here in Western Mexico. I am experiencing the quarantine moments in a little town called San Pancho. San Pancho, Mexico, the state of Nayarit, where we are experiencing the same sort of lockdown. Beaches are closed, except here they have army dudes with machine guns making sure that you don't go on the beach, so it's quite effective. Hi, Rondita. So no one goes on the beach, no one's in the town, this is usually the peak time of year in San Pancho, Mexico. And now it is empty. It is like, when I talk to some of the people that have lived here for years, that this is like what it was like 20 years ago. It's very interesting how things have changed, yet they're the same. I'm glad to uh, share my music with you all. It's the least I can do. Turn on some, some little soundtrack. I'm gonna play uh, background music from. I'll play along with Michael Manring and Carl Weingarten. Me. It, uh, what I'm going to play is a um, show that we did many, many years ago in um, WXPN in Philadelphia. And it was... Uh, we played a show, a show there called The Gatherings, a concert called The Gatherings in Philadelphia. And one of the things that they do is have music after a live broadcast from basically 2 in the morning until 3 in the morning, something like that. So, uh, this is uh, our recording from 2011, Chuck Carl Weingarten and myself. Uh, Michael Manry. I think it's nice to share. Okay, tell me if the mix seems okay.
changed the vantage point. Thank you, Barb. That was the idea. My girl, they're with us. Don't go anywhere. different point of view. thing Did that happen? Well, you can. Look at that.
this um, adds a little bit of peace, you know. A little bit. A And in the meantime, things are developing.
I've returned. Thank you for your patience. Felt like it was time to make sure there's no mosquitoes biting Halloween. You're listening to Michael Manring and Carl Weingarten, myself, in the background. Some whales.
Friday, good, good Friday to those of you that are celebrating this today. Happy Pesach to those who just had their Passover. And for those of us watching, we are grateful that we've been passed over. May that be so for the rest of us.
right down here, actually. Let me see if I can make it look like I'm serenading Venus. so bright down here that when it starts to go down it actually shines on the water like the moon does I have to keep looking down because there's these big black ants that come out at night and they bite
see holding the sun here. Look, I have a whole planet in my hand. So cute. There you go. Let's make a little heart. Look. Is that how you do it? background is our band Blue Eternity, Michael Mannering and Carl Weingarten and myself playing on WXPN in Philadelphia back in 2011.
watching from tonight just say the city and state or country or room or wherever it might be just curious I'm sitting Mexico. Looking at Venus at the top of the screen. I'm a little bit north of Puerto Vallarta. We can almost uh, pin you down. I think we can start at the Milky Way. And we'll see that tonight. I wish I had a better resolution iPad for this process, right? Garden on the guitar. The one and only.
Denver's nice. The first, uh, the first bud tender I, I ever met. I walked into their store in Denver. Bud tender, you know, the little shops where they sell, you know, herb, they call them bud tenders as a powers to bar tender. the first state to make it okay to get slightly altered, as you might imagine. Miami. I used to live in Coral Gables. Graduated from Coral Gables High School. Yes, I did. down in Dinner Key. Coconut Grove, the best. That's right. Cavalier. 19, <laughs> I graduated.
75. 75. That's actually why I still play the trumpet, because of the band director there. Uncle Willie Ledoux. 1973, we went to Europe. Took the whole band, 200 people. England, France, Germany, Holland, Belgium. So good. <laughs> Concert under the Eiffel Tower, playing with the peacocks on the grounds of Warwick Castle. It's awesome. So great. The band director of that band, the Coral Gables High School Band of Distinction, Got me my first paying gig playing taps for a veteran behind a tree at his funeral. How's everybody uh, dealing with all this stuff? The once in three lifetime thing that this is. You okay? It's deep. Dave DeLulo. Love you, man. You seem to be writing this thing out in Mexico. Yeah, William Ledoux. No one like him. I have a story about William Ledoux. He's the band director at Gables. And I graduated there in 1975. And I didn't start making albums until 2005. It took a while. And in 2007, I was working on my second album. And it was in, uh, I was mixing one of the songs, two of the songs, in uh, Ocala, Florida, with a, a guy by the name of Bruce Swedeen. Bruce Swedeen is one of the finest engineers. He worked on Michael Jackson's Thriller and a whole bunch of stuff with Quincy Jones. And Uncle Willie, William Ledoux, had retired very near, very near Ocala. So he came to the session, him and his, his wife. And to have had him there all those years later was uh, quite a blessing. He passed away not long after that. It was awesome. So, Uncle Willie has been inspiration for many, many, many musicians I know. I think I know four or five band directors that came out of my class and the classes I was around. That's how inspirational the guy was. Unbelievable. So I played this already, but I think I'll... Uh,
Ah, no, I'll just keep going. Actually, here's the one. Play name this tune. Which story, Tom? Um, I don't know if it's Bonnie Raitt, but there is a... The story about this song, I Can't Make You Love Me, it's actually written by two, two gentlemen uh, from Nashville, Nashville songwriters, Mike Reed and Alan Shamblin. And the song is about um, Mike Reed I think it was Mike, watching the um, news one night. It was a story about a guy that um, was really, really mad at his ex-girlfriend. And he had gone and shot up her mobile home. And one of the 
things he said when he was on the news was, uh, I can't make her love me if she don't. So that was the generated the song title, I Can't Make You Love Me If You Don't. And there's another story. There's two actually other stories having to do with this track in my life. I recorded the song um, down, well, I recorded it at Will Ackerman's studio up in Vermont. But we had uh, hired, or I had hired, um, Bernard Purdy and Chuck Rainey. Um, the, Bernard's a drummer. Chuck Rainey is a bass player. And I say that as just a drummer and bass player, but they are two of the most recorded and accomplished um, artists, musicians. They play on everything from Aretha Franklin's Respect and all, not all, but quite a few of the Steely Dan records. I think Bernard says at least he's the most recorded drummer. One of the things that Bernard is pretty is famous for is that he'd set up his drum kit, have a sign next to the drums, and say, you gone done it, you done hired the hit maker. So Bernard lives in New Jersey. Oh, oh, well, I, let me go back to that. Yes, I read this, I didn't, Bonnie didn't tell me this, I've never spoken to her actually. But yeah, she recorded it in the first take. Uh, when she recorded that for her uh, her album, this she's the one that made this probably the most uh, recognized that song. And yes, she uh, she could only do it once because she was so moved to tears by by it. And I understand that when I play it, I hear her. So. Down in New Jersey, Chuck Rainey lives down in, in near Dallas. Bernard lives in New Jersey, and we recorded the song for my album next, and we set up a recording session down uh, on the Jersey Shore. Uh, and we we. Uh, were set up that day to record the album. And we did a, Bernard and and and, uh, and Chuck Rainey did uh, six songs that day uh, from my album Next, did the rhythm section for it. And um, <laughs> we, we, were, we were recording there and Bernard, we did a take of this song, of I Can't Make You Love Me. After the take, I um, I wanted to hear the drums at halftime instead of the way Bernard played it the first time. And I was back in the control room, and, uh, <laughs> and I said, I want him to play it differently. And they all looked at me. Uh, Steve, Steve Jankowski, it was his studio, it is his studio, he's a trumpet player, he uh, plays with uh, Nile Rodgers quite a bit, and Tom Eaton was there, and I said, I said, I, uh, I want him to do a take playing at halftime. They both looked at me and they said, go tell him, <laughs> because you, but with Bernard Purdy, he does one take, and if you go ask him to do it again, he'll say why. He goes, uh, he goes, I'll play it the same the second time. So I said, okay, I'm going in. And I went out in the drum booth and I said, Bernard. He goes, yeah. I said, can we do another take of this? And but this time you can play it halftime. He and he looks at me and he goes, halftime. I said. Yeah, could you? No, I'm like basically begging the guy, you know, even though that it's like my recording session. Would you, do, would you, Bernard? He goes, 
Because if you want it half time, sure. So I go back in the studio and Jankowski says, he must like you. He doesn't always do that. So he did, and that's the one that's on the album. My album next. Um, we're talking about I Can't Make You Love Me for those of you that just joined. Um, should I play it again? I think I will. I'll do it on the flugelhorn this time. There's actually another story that goes along with this. When we finished recording the album, produced by Will Ackerman and Tom Eaton and myself. Um, maybe about a year later, I, um, I sent a, a copy of it to, uh, to Bonnie Raitt and I never heard back, but I also sort of researched on the internet and tried to find uh, contact information for uh, Alan Chamblin and Mike Reed. Couldn't find anything for Alan. These are the co-writers of I Can't Make You Love Me. Um, but I found Mike's office on the, uh, Mike Reed's office on the, uh, on the web, his information, and I found the name of his assistant. So I sent a copy of the song that we had done you know, from the album um, to his assistant. And it didn't bounce, so I n it went somewhere. So about six months later, I'm in the Florida Keys with three of my friends, my oldest friends. And we're walking in this parking lot, and the phone rings. It's, Hello, Jeff? So, yeah. Was, this is Mike Reed. Like, freaked out. This is one of the co-writers of, like, one of the best songs, right? I can't make you love me. Mike Reed, I love what you did with my song. I'm like, wow. And then we talked about it a little bit. He goes, he goes, and you know, he goes, uh, one of my favorite drummers is uh, is playing on that song, uh, Bernard Purdy. I loved everything that he did with, uh, I think it was Cat Stevens or something like that. So we had a little conversation. And he called me just to say that, which was beautiful. So I'll, here's a version of it on my flugelhorn. Actually, you know what? What the hell? Why don't I just play along with the track? You can have the we can hear Bernard Purdy and you can hear Chuck Green. Why not? I mean, really, why not? Come on. Come on, internet in Mexico. I'm making music here tonight from San Pancho, Mexico the west coast north of Puerto Vallarta. Here we go. So let's play I Can't Make You Love Me along with the track just for fun. Can you hear it kind of? Highly likely the horn would be louder than the track. It's Philip Auberg playing piano, Bernard, Chuck Rainey, Tom Eaton playing the Hammond.
bless you and everybody in your fine city. you love me. Selamat Sore, Bob Nixick. Or is it Selamat Bagi? I don't remember. So whatever. How's your night is in Indonesian. 
Bob Nixick, who's watching. Thank you, Herschel. Is living in Bali now. I met him in the canals in Venice when I lived down there. But you know what? Since I'm doing this, I kind of feel a little bit like it's cheating to play along with music I've already recorded, and I think I'm going to do another one. It's from my first album, Released. Actually, I'm going to tell you guys a story. Every one of my albums has one word as a title. And additionally, every one of my album covers has a turtle on it. Good night, Tom. And those words are snapshots of points in my life. So released is, I released my first album when I was 50 years old. It took me that long. Finally, it was, actually I had issued a, a, an EP before that called At Last with four of the songs that are on this album released. So At Last shows a turtle walking towards a flugelhorn which sort of represents Matthew Sens is the guy that came up with this this cover as well as a cover for released. Represents how long it took for me to be able to release some music. And then finally when I was able to put it out there into the world released was the name of the first album. And then a couple years later I put out my second album called True and at the time I was not living a truthful life put it that way and the only thing that was true was my music and then a few years later I had made some changes in my life and the name of the album was Surrender because I was surrendering to those changes and after a few years of dealing with surrendering I was wondering what was next so next was the next album and my most recent album is called Reach because now here I am at my early 60s, I've come into a part of my life where I can go anywhere. I, I feel like I've, I'm going around in a traffic circle and I can take any exit. So I'm reaching for something I don't know what. I think we all are to some degree. So that was a little story about my albums. And this song, from reach, I mean from released, is called Fool's Gold. Sometimes Fool's Gold um, represents how sometimes you fall in love and there's just something about it that stops it from being fully real. So Sometimes what you reach for and what you want is gold, but sometimes it's uh, fool's gold. So I haven't played this in a while. If I don't do it right, don't shoot me. That dot, that's Venus. Venus.
Sorry you lost me, Herschel. I'm still here. All right, I think I'm gonna do one more. It's been on a long time. I know you all have things to do. From the same album, a song called As I Live and Breathe. All right, before I go, I just want to uh, wish all of you joy and peace and love and strength and understanding through all of this. It's, um, the world has never been through this, at least not while we're alive, um, or our parents were alive, or maybe even their parents. And I think that there are moments now of um, isolation, and yet the world keeps going, right? Sun keeps setting. Stars come out. There's Venus. Venus right there. Venus right there. So Venus is still there. The sun's still there. North Star still there. Ocean's still rolling. And I just want all of you to know that um, that which moves us all, that which gives us strength and life and joy and love and understanding and beauty um, never goes away. And it might seem bleak for those of my friends that are in places where maybe the song is you know, sirens and people aren't making it. Um, those of us that are here are witnesses to this. And it will be our role to look at the earth and thank the earth that we live on for making it possible to appreciate what we have. I think that's part of what this is. So I'll leave you with as I live and breathe. And uh, I love you. Good Friday to those of you that believe that. Happy Passover to those that have believed that. And uh, hopefully we all will believe in uh, love.
Wish you all a beautiful night. Todd, you just got here, I'm about to leave. But um, I wish all of you a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Those of you that celebrate Easter, may all of us rise. May all of us be born again through this. May the world itself be born again through this. May this lesson that we are all taking part in uh, be for good, even though there's so much pain and so much loss. Where a hug becomes a weapon and staying apart from somebody is an act of love. It's, it's, everything's the opposite. It's wild. Hey, Todd. So I wish all of you, as a matter of fact, I'm going to end with some words that sort of capture this that I found the other day.
you know, there's been a lot of people that are are, um, are are putting their feelings into words, and there's been some amazing, amazing bits of that that I've been reading. So here's one. We fell asleep in one world and woke up in another. Suddenly, Disney is out of magic. Paris is no longer romantic. New York doesn't stand up anymore. Chinese Wall is no longer a fortress and Mecca is empty. Hugs and kisses suddenly become weapons and not visiting parents and friends becomes an act of love. Suddenly you realize that power, beauty, and money are worthless and can't get you the oxygen you're fighting for. The world continues its life and is beautiful. It only puts humans in cages. I think it's sending us a message. You are not necessary. The air, earth, water, and sky without you are fine. When you come back, remember that you are my guests, not my masters. It's pretty beautiful, I think. And since I'm on a roll like this, I'll read you some more. This one's really super long, but I think it kind of says a lot. It's a piece of writing called The Gift, an imagined letter from COVID-19 to humans. It's from Kristen Flints. Stop, just stop. It is no longer a request it is a mandate. We will help you. We will bring the supersonic high-speed merry-go-round to a halt. We will stop the planes, the trains, the schools, the malls, the meetings, the frenetic, furied rush of illusions and obligations that keep you from hearing our single and shared beating heart. The way we breathe together in unison Our obligation is to each other, as it always has been, even if, even though you have forgotten. We will interrupt this broadcast, the endless cacophonous broadcast of divisions and distractions to bring you this long breaking news. We are not well. None of us, all of us are suffering. Last year, the firestorms that scorched the lungs of the earth did not give you pause. Nor the typhoons in Africa, China, Japan, nor the fevered climates in Japan and India. You have not been listening. It is hard to listen when you are so busy all the time, hustling to uphold the comforts and conveniences that scaffold your lives. But the foundation is giving way buckling under the weight of your needs and desires, we will help you. We will bring the firestorms to your body. We'll bring the fever to your body. We'll bring the burning, searing, and flooding to your lungs so that you might hear we are not well. Despite what you might think or feel, we are not the enemy. We are messenger. We are ally. We are a balancing force. We are asking you to stop to be still, to listen, to move beyond your individual concerns and consider the concerns of all. To be with your ignorance, to find your humility, to relinquish, to relinquish your thinking minds and travel deep into the mind of the heart. To look up into the sky streaked with fewer planes and see it to notice its condition, clear, smoky, smoggy, rainy? How much do you need it to be healthy so that you may also be healthy? And look at a tree and see it to notice its condition. How does its health contribute to the health of the sky, to the air you need to be healthy? To visit a river and see it to notice its condition, clear, clean, murky, polluted? How much do you need it to be healthy so that you may also be healthy? How does its health contribute to the health of the tree? 
who contributes to the health of the sky so that you may also be healthy. Many are afraid now. Do not demonize your fear and also do not let it rule you. Instead, let it speak to you. In your stillness, listen for its wisdom. What might it be telling you about what is at work, at issue, at risk, beyond the threats and personal inconvenience and illness? As the health of a tree, a river, the sky tells you about the quality of your own health, what might the quality of your health tell you about the health of the rivers, the trees, the sky, and all of us who share this planet with you? Stop. Notice if you are resisting. Notice what you are resisting. Ask why. Stop. Just stop. Listen. Ask us what we might teach you about illness and healing about what might be required so that all may be well. We will help you if you listen. Hey Josh, some beautiful words right there. There's a lot of people writing and thinking and talking now. Since I'm in Mexico, and looks like I'm gonna be here for a long time, I'm going to end with a song I played earlier. Uh, it's beloved by many here uh, and if you I'll let one of you write down what the song is gave Venus a kiss. All right. Have a beautiful night, everybody. I love you very much. Buenas noches.